They were the women who had had it all, the wives and mistresses of Nazi Germany's leaders. They had lived gilded, luxurious lives at the expense of the state, being used as symbols for perfect German womanhood and often wielded considerable influence and power behind the scenes. So what happened to them and their children when their husbands and boyfriends fell from power so dramatically in May 1945? How did the Allies treat the spouses of the top Nazis? Many of the children of Hitler's inner circle are alive today, in a story that spans over 75 years, from the defeat of Nazi Germany until the present day. So let's begin with an interesting one, Hitler's sister-in-law. That's right, sister-in-law. Of course I'm referring to Gretel Braun, Eva Braun's sister. Hitler married Eva the day before they died, a reward for her many years of loyalty. Gretel Braun had been an important member of the inner circle, or the court, around Hitler. In 1944, Gretel had married Hitler's SS liaison, Gruppenführer Hermann Fegelein. There had been a marriage ceremony in Berchtesgaden, at which Himmler and Martin Bormann were the witnesses. The happy couple had then visited Hitler at the Berghof, his private house on the Orbezalzberg, before hosting a wedding breakfast at the Eagle's Nest, Hitler's famous reception house high atop Kelstein Mountain. This wedding took place only three days before the D-Day landings in Normandy. Gretel had accompanied her sister to the Reich Chancellery and bomb-battered Berlin on the 19th of January 1945 to see her husband, but returned to the Orbezatzberg on the 9th of February. Eva went alone back to Berlin to join Hitler in the bunker, which she would never leave alive. But Gretel stayed on at the Orbezatzberg because she was pregnant. Things had unravelled for Gretel and Hermann when Fegelein had deserted the bunker during the final stages of the Battle of Berlin and been apprehended by Hitler's bodyguards. Coming on the back of Heinrich Himmler's betrayal, the Reichsfuhrer SS had been secretly negotiating a surrender with the Western Allies behind Hitler's back. Hitler, egged on by Bormann, condemned Fegelein to death, and he was shot in the Reich Chancellery Garden despite Eva Braun's pleas. Early on the 29th of April 1945, Hitler married Eva Braun, making the widowed Gretel his sister-in-law. Gretel gave birth to a girl at the resort town of Zellamsee on the 5th of May 1945, a week after Hitler and Eva's suicides. She named the baby Eva after her sister. All of her photo albums, jewellery, amateur film footage, letters, including many letters written between Hitler and Eva Braun, and many mentos have been hidden at Fishhorn Castle, the headquarters of her husband Hermann's old SS cavalry division, Florian Geyer, and where his brother was chief of staff. But shortly after the war, Gretel was befriended by a German refugee who persuaded her to show him the hiding place of this valuable and historically significant material. The refugee was in reality an agent for the US Counterintelligence Corps, all the material was seized and sent to Washington, D.C., though some of it has disappeared and some of it has never been shown to the public. In 1954, Gretel Fegelein married businessman Kurt Berlinghoff in Munich. The marriage produced no children. As for her daughter, Eva Fegelein committed suicide in June 1971 at the age of 26, following the death of her fiancé in a car crash. In later life, Gretel suffered from Alzheimer's disease and died in October 1987 at the town of Steingarten, Bavaria, at the age of 72. The two witnesses at Gretel's wedding in June 1944, Himmler and Bormann, both had interesting family arrangements. Himmler had been a late bloomer, a shy and fastidious man. He met his future wife, Margrethe, in 1927. She was a nurse, and they shared an interest in homeopathy and herbal medicine. Married in July 1928, Margrethe was seven years older than Himmler. The marriage produced only one child, a daughter named Gudrun, born in 1929. Later, Himmler adopted a boy named Gerhard von Aha, the son of an SS officer who had died before the war. Himmler was a very busy man who saw little of his wife. The couple maintained two residences, 
a large villa in Berlin's Dahlem district, and a house at Gmund on the Tegernsee in Bavaria. Himmler was able to spend more time with Gudrun, and she accompanied her father on many state occasions and official visits, including at least once during a visit to Buchenwald concentration camp. But Himmler was to find love with a younger woman. In 1938, Himmler took a fancy to one of his secretaries, a woman twelve years his junior, Hedwig Potast. Potast and Himmler became romantically involved in 1939 after Himmler had declared his love for her. He wanted to divorce his wife and marry Potast, but such a move would have been hypocritical since Himmler demanded the highest moral behaviour and standards from his SS subordinates, and officially frowned on the very behaviour he was secretly practising. So Potast became Himmler's long-term mistress. They lived together off and on in Mecklenburg, and Potthast bore him the sons Helga, born in 1942, and a daughter Nanette Dorothea, born on the 20th of July 1944, the same day a conspiracy of army officers blew up Hitler with a bomb at the wolf's lair. At the end of the war, Himmler's mistress was living in Rosenheim with her children and the wife of SS Obergruppenführer Oswald Pohl, one of Himmler's top commanders and a major war criminal. Himmler's wife had been working as a wartime nurse for the German Red Cross in a very senior position. His adopted son, Gerhard von Aha, saw combat against the Soviets as part of a Hitler Youth unit and was captured but later released. He survived the war. Himmler's wife and mistress remained loyal to him right up to the end. Margrethe and Gudrun fled Gmünd just ahead of advancing U.S. troops and made it to Bolzano in Italy, where they were arrested. The Americans held them in a series of internment camps in Italy, France and Germany before taking them to Nuremberg to testify at the famous trials. This experience deeply affected Gudrun, turning her into a devout defender of her father for the rest of her life. Released in November 1946, Margrethe was also bitter and legally challenged her denazification classification, largely based on a high rank in the German Red Cross. In 1951, her category was changed to the lowest, meaning she was not held responsible for her husband's crimes. But in 1953, she was reclassified again as Category 2, a beneficiary of the Nazi regime. She received 30 days punitive work, lost her pension rights and the right to vote. She lived with her sister and adopted son in a small apartment in Hapen, and her last years were spent with her daughter Gudrun in Munich, where she died in 1967, aged 73. Gudrun became a vocal and visible neo-Nazi supporter in West Germany, the Nazi Princess of the Right, she married author and journalist Wolf-Dieter Berwitz, having two children with him. Berwitz was heavily involved with Germany's right-wing party, the NPD, and Gudrun was also involved with Stiller Hilfe, or Silent Help, an organization that provided aid to former Nazi and SS officers, helping out such war criminals as Klaus Barbie, a.k.a. the Butcher of Lyon, and Martin Sommer, the Hangman of Buchenwald. Because she was Himmler's daughter, she was held in very high regard in the neo-Nazi community. Gudrun Berwitz died in May 2018 at her home in Munich, aged 88. As for Himmler's mistress, she was arrested by the US Army in July 1945 and interrogated. Hedwig Potthast lived in Teisendorf and remained in contact with the family of Himmler's older brother, Gebhard, an SS Obergruppenführer Karl Wolf former chief of Himmler's personal staff. Potthast later married and changed her surname. Her son Helga struggled all his life with poor health and lived with his mother, while her daughter became a medical doctor and is believed to be alive today, living in northern Germany. Hedwig Potthast died in Baden-Baden in September 1994, aged 82. Martin Bormann was, like his arch-rival Himmler, a hypocrite concerning the family values officially espoused by the Nazi leadership. In 1929, Bormann had married 19-year-old Gerda Buch, 
Her father was a senior Nazi figure, and she knew Hitler well. Hitler and Rudolf Hess were the witnesses at their wedding. The Nazi state officially encouraged big families, and Bormann's family was huge, ten children born between 1930 and 1943. This large brood was often filmed with Hitler at his home, as the Bormann villa was located next door to Hitler's house, the Berghof and the Obersalzberg. One child died as a baby. Many of the children were named for their godparents. The eldest, Martin Adolf Bormann, was named for his godfather, Adolf Hitler. Rudolf Bormann for Rudolf Hess, though his name was later changed to Helmut following Hess's flight to Scotland in 1941. Heinrich Bormann for Heinrich Himmler, and Eva Bormann for Hitler's girlfriend. Gerda Bormann was a fanatical anti-Semite, but her marriage to Bormann was not easy. The Brown Eminence, as Bormann was nicknamed, was constantly unfaithful. Gerda, a tall woman who towered over her husband, was often humiliated by him in front of guests, while in private Bormann behaved in a loving and sentimental manner. She supported the idea of something called parallel marriages, so a man could produce more offspring for Hitler, and tolerated his affairs accordingly. One of Bormann's mistresses was the film star Manja Behrens, though they had no children together. At war's end, Martin Bormann stayed in the Berlin bunker with Hitler to the bitter end, and disappeared in early May 1945 during a breakout attempt by the surviving bunker personnel. His fate will be the subject of a future video. Gerda and her children sought refuge in Volkenstein, a mountain village near Bolzano in Italy. She was arrested and interrogated by US forces. Moved to Murano, it was discovered that she had uterine cancer. She died in hospital in April 1946, aged 37. Her children were adopted by a Catholic priest. Interestingly, Bormann's elder son, Martin Adolf, later became a Roman Catholic priest himself. Though he left the priesthood, married a former nun, and had children. He died in 2013. Six of Martin Bormann's children are still alive today. A top Nazi who fell into disfavour before the end of the war was Foreign Minister Joachim von Ribbentrop, a highly influential figure during the 1930s as Hitler used diplomacy to expand his influence in Europe. With the coming of war, diplomacy fell by the wayside, and with it Ribbentrop's position. He contented himself by continuing to play a more limited role at Hitler's court and in enriching himself. Not well liked by the other leaders, he managed to make himself scarce at war's end, abandoning his family to seek refuge in Hamburg, where he was eventually tracked down and arrested in a squalid flat in the company of a young woman on the 14th of June 1945 by the Belgian section of the British SAS. He was subsequently hanged following trial at Nuremberg. This vain and ambitious man had married Anna Henkel in 1920 when he was a dashing cavalry officer. Anna was the daughter of a wealthy wine producer from Wiesbaden. Together they would have five children. Annalise, as she was known, evidently married beneath her aristocratic social status, at least according to her mother, who hated Ribbentrop. Annalise was noted by contemporaries as a stubborn, headstrong woman who controlled her husband. It was she who pushed him into joining the Nazi party, even Hitler noting that Annalise appeared to wear the trousers in their marriage. At war's end, Annalise was arrested and held at the Dachau internment camp, where the former concentration camp was. She and her husband had grown fabulously wealthy, and though the Allies tried to strip her of her wealth, she fought back vigorously through the courts, much of her fortune actually derived from inheritances from her father. She also wrote several books, defending her husband's actions, and died in 1973, fairly unrepentant, at the age of 77. Her eldest son, Rudolf von Ribbentrop, was a highly decorated Waffen-SS captain during the war, earning the Knight's Cross for gallantry in combat. Educated at Westminster School in London, when his father was German ambassador, he was wounded five times in action. He died in 2019, aged 98. Longevity seems to be a von Ribbentrop trait. 
as three of von Ribbentrop's children are still alive today. Son Adolf von Ribbentrop, named after you-know-who, is 85. Daughter Ursula von Ribbentrop is currently 88. And daughter Bettina von Ribbentrop is 98. Perhaps the most important Nazi wife was not Himmler's, Bormann's, or even latterly Hitler's. It was Emmy Goering, the second wife of Luftwaffe chief, and since Hesse's flight to Scotland, Hitler's named deputy and successor, Hermann Goering. Born in 1893, Emmy Zonemann was an actress in Weimar. In World War I, she had married a fellow actor, though divorced on amicable terms in 1926. She met Hermann Göring in the early 1930s. Hermann's first wife, Karin, who was Swedish, had died in October 1931 of heart failure, shortly before her 43rd birthday. Göring was devastated by her death, and he would perpetuate the name of his first wife in the name of his grand country estate outside Berlin, which he named Karenhull, and two of his yachts. Her body remained on the site of Karenhull after the building was blown up on Göring's order as the Red Army approached in April 1945, and her remains were discovered in 1991. She was subsequently reburied in Sweden. Göring married Emmy in 1935 at a lavish wedding in Berlin. In 1938, a daughter was born named Edda, after Mussolini's daughter, Countess Edda Ciano. Emmy and the Countess being good friends. Emmy was soon described as the First Lady of the Reich, an elegant hostess who enjoyed to the full her husband's decadent and lavish lifestyle. Interestingly, Emmy had no time for Hitler's girlfriend, Eva Braun, treating her in a patronising and contemptuous way, the friction becoming so bad that Hitler had to intervene and order Goering to have his wife treat Eva with respect. Later, apparently, Emmy was even banned from Hitler's house, the Berghof, though the Goerings maintained a lavish house just behind Bormann's property, just one of many houses, castles and hunting lodges Goering owned, all decorated with the finest things, including art looted from Jewish collectors and Paris museums. Goering's daughter, Edda, was treated like a princess and though noted to be courteous and well-mannered, was spoiled with clothes, toys and lavish playhouses, including a 50-metre-long replica of Frederick the Great's palace of Sanssouci, paid for by the Luftwaffe. Edda was Goering's only child, and he doted on her. Unlike the other Nazi leaders, Goering did not take mistresses, remaining completely faithful to his wife. In the latter part of the war, Goering gradually fell from grace, as his air force failed to stop the Allied air raids that were destroying city after city in Germany. A few days before Hitler died, Goering unwisely attempted to succeed him as leader, believing that Hitler, trapped in his bunker, was no longer able to exercise control of what remained of the Reich. Bormann convinced Hitler that Goering was committing treason, and Hitler ordered him arrested. Held under house arrest with his family at his home in the Obersalzberg, they survived the heavy RAF bombing raid that destroyed or damaged most of the Nazi buildings. The SS then evacuated them to Goering's castle at Mautendorf. Freed on the 5th of May, as the war was almost over, Goering attempted to reach US lines, as he believed he could negotiate the German surrender personally with General Dwight D. Eisenhower. He and his family and staff were apprehended by a special US intelligence mission, an operation I've made a video about, link in the end screen, and taken to Fishhorn Castle on the 7th of May 1945. From there, Goering was taken to US headquarters and formally arrested as a war crime suspect. Emmy and Edda remained at Fishhorn before being interned at Camp Ashkan in Luxembourg. Released, they moved into one of their castles, Burg Weltenstein, a Neuhaus, close to Nuremberg. Hermann Göring was the star defendant at the Nuremberg trials, and Emmy and Edda were allowed to visit him in the court prison. On the 15th of October 1946, the night before his execution, Göring committed suicide with a concealed cyanide capsule. 
Goering had amassed truly staggering amounts of wealth during the war, much of it illicit, but sorting out what was Goering's property and that of his wife and daughter was very difficult. Emmy Goering was punished as part of the denazification process. She was convicted of being a Nazi and sentenced to one year in prison. She also suffered the confiscation of 30% of her remaining property. She and her daughter lived in several places after the war, while Edda completed her schooling, and Emmy eventually purchased a small flat in a modern block in Munich, publishing her autobiography in 1967. The daughter grew into an attractive young woman, studying law at the University of Munich. She worked as a law clerk and in a hospital laboratory, but never married, caring for her mother until Emmy's death in 1973. Edda became romantically involved with German journalist Gerd Heidemann, who apparently discovered the infamous Hitler diaries in the 1970s and bought and refurbished Hermann Goering's yacht, Karin II. Edda was his girlfriend for five years, introducing him to her Nazi friends, including former SS generals Karl Wolf and Wilhelm Monke, the officer responsible for defending the Reich Chancery and the Führerbunker during the final battle in Berlin. Edda petitioned the Bavarian government for compensation concerning the expropriation of her father's huge estate, but without success. Edda Goering, unrepentant defender of her father's memory, died the same year as Himmler's daughter in 2018 and is buried in Munich. She was 80 years old. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.